Hello friends, welcome to Fears Cloud Learn to Lead. Good morning to all the students. Today we will discuss very important current fairs of 14th and 15th of Jan 2022. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current fairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you have to download our application Careers Cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily, you will see three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Most important section is the monthly. And we are providing four type of PDFs. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. Third is best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer. And fourth one is pocket PDF. It means two liners and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs in quick format before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are providing 20 most important topic wise PDF. It means if you want to cover one particular topic, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you're a banking student, we are providing three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format, and third is the quiz section. But all these three things are only related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz only on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. We are providing detailed budget and economic survey. Expected question and answer will be provided to you so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing you state current fair and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years. And we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ASH10. And if you have any query, you can email us or you can call us on this number or email ID. So let's start 14th and 15th of Jan 2022 current fairs. But first of all, you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible. And you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. And join our Telegram group from the description box link. Here is the first question in the most important section. Who has been appointed as the chairman of Indian Space Research Organization? So this is the most important question. And recently, appointment committee of the cabinet, which is chaired by Prime Minister, approved the appointment of a rocket scientist S. Somnath. S. Somnath as the new chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization, or you can say ISRO. And also, he became the space secretary. Space Secretary of the Department of Space, Department of uh, Space. And he will succeed K. Sivan, K. Sivan, who is set to retire on the 14th of Jan 2022. So you have to remember the former was K. Sivan. Also, he was the uh, Space Secretary of the Department of Space. But now he retired. And the new chairman and also the Space Secretary is S. Somnath. And you can also remember that he become the 10th chairman of ISRO. 10th chairman of ISRO. So you can also see here the picture of eminent rocket scientist S. Somnath who is appointed as the new chairman of ISRO. And Mr. Somnath, the senior space scientist, is also taking part in the Gaganyaan mission. Uh, this is India's first human spaceflight mission which will be launched by ISRO in the year of 2023. And Mr. Somnath is currently the director of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center and the Indian Institute of Space Science of Technology since 2018. And uh, Somnath is also a recipient of very prestigious award which is known as Space Gold Medal. Space Gold Medal from the Astronomical Unit or Astronomical Society of India. But you have to remember one thing about ISRO, that ISRO was established in the year of 1969. I think many students know this, that who was the founder of ISRO, who was the first chairman of ISRO. The first chairman was Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who was also known as the father of Indian space program. But you can also remember the other options here, very important, like Alka Upadhyay, you can see the name. Very important name, very important appointment because uh, she was recently appointed as chairman of National Highway Authority of India. Next is Pradeep Shah. He was recently appointed as the first chairman of Bad Bank of India, which is known as National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited, which was recently created. So you have to remember other two appointments. Now we are moving to next question. 
who received knighthood from Prince William. So the only keyword here is the knighthood award, which is given by Prince William. So Prince William is the uh, Duke of Cambridge. You can remember Duke of Cambridge. And uh, first of all, you have to remember what is the meaning of knighthood. A knighthood is a title that is given to a man by British king, by British king or queen, British king or queen uh, for his achievement or his services to his country. So this is very important. And uh, what is the meaning of this knighthood? A man who has been given a knighthood can put sir, can put sir in front of his name instead of mister. So he will not have to write this uh, uh, mister, he have to write sir. So this means he received the knighthood title and uh, it is given to a man only by a British king or queen. And uh, recently this title was given to West Indies former cricketer or you can say West Indies former captain uh, Clive Lloyd. So answer of this question is B. So you can see here. Former West Indies captain Clive Lloyd received this knighthood title. And very important player for the West Indies because Clive Lloyd led the West Indies to a victory over Australia at the Lords in the final or you can say inaugural cricket World Cup tournament in 1975. This was the first World Cup and this won by uh, West Indies. In the second World Cup also in 1979, he again led the West Indies to world title for the second time where they beat England at the Lords, same ground. So, in, uh, it means that first two World Cup won by uh, West Indies with the help of Lord or you can say Clive Lloyd. Uh, both the tournaments are very, very important. And you have to remember uh, during his captaincy, West Indies cricket or West Indies, uh, uh, you can say cricketers hold the record of 27 test matches without defeat, which included 11 wins in a row. I am talking about test matches. This is a big thing. And in 2009, he was inducted into ICC. Cricket Hall of the Fame and Lloyd was also a former West Indies team manager, also the selector and ICC match referee. So very important. But another name you have to remember about Aon Morgan. So England's World Cup winning captain Aon Morgan was awarded with the CBE or you can say commander of the order of the British Empire also by Prince William for his services toward the game of cricket, especially to England. But you have to remember there are three awards. One is uh, uh, CBE, CBE, second is OBE and third one is MBE. So, this is in serial order. Like CBE is commander of order of the British Empire. This is the highest ranking order of the British Empire award. Followed by the OBE, it is officer of the order of the British Empire. And next is MBE, it is member of the order of the British Empire. So, Aon Morgan won this CBE. This is the highest ranking order of the British Empire award. Next, Lewis Hamilton also won the uh, knighthood award for the 2021 uh, for his services of the motorsports. And remember, Lewis Hamilton is very famous Formula 1 racing driver. So all the things are very important under this question, but you can also remember here the name of Eon Morgan. I already covered this, that he won CBE. This is the commander of the Order of British Empire Award. But other two persons are again very important. One is Alessandro Prieto. Alessandro Prieto won Bird Photographer of the Year. Bird Photographer of the Year 2021 Award. Next is Cyrus Poonawala. He won Lok Manya Tilak. Lok Manya Tilak National Award for 2021. Other two awards are very, very important. Now we are moving to the next question. Who became the first Indian to grab world number one spot in under 19 girls single category according to Badminton World Federation junior ranking? So recently this organization published or you can say released under 19 girls singles category ranking and under this ranking who became the first Indian to grab world number one sport and this uh, Indian is Tasneem Meer. So answer of this question is C. So, you can say Tasneem Mir became the first Indian to grab world number one spot in under 19 category. Remember, under 19 category and it is girls single category with 10,810 points in the latest Badminton World Federation junior ranking. And you have to remember this picture because you can uh, retain this uh, question for a long time period if you retain this picture. And uh, in 2021, she won three junior international tournament which was held in Bulgaria, France and Belgium. And uh, this helped her climb up for the number one position. Even achievement of the SNEEM have never been accomplished by any Indian girl because uh, the best known girl is PV Sindhu and she was ranked number two during her under 19. So uh, she was never ranked on number one position. So number one position only goes to the SNEEM. So you have to remember that's why this question is very, very important. And uh, you can also remember about Badminton World Federation. It was established in the year of 1934 and its headquarters is in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur is in Malaysia. Moving to next question. 
So here is the next category basically. Uh, this is very important question section, but you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join a telegram group from the description box link. Here is the first question. What is the theme of 16th edition of India Digital Summit 2022? So this is very important summit and this is inaugurated by Piyush Goel ji. Piyush Goel who is currently the Union Minister of Commerce and Industry and uh, uh, Piyush Goel ji addressed this 16th edition of India Digital Summit uh, 2022 through a video conference. So it is a virtual event and the theme is supercharging startups. So answer of this question is C. So you can see here Piyush Goel ji picture here, smiling picture and uh, theme is supercharging startup. So this is virtual event and this is the 16th India Digital Summit 2022. And this summit is organized by Internet and Mobile Association of India. So you can remember it is one of the biggest conference for the digital industry, for the digital industry. And this is the oldest event, oldest event of the digital industry of India. And in the last six years, the government of India has produced 82 unicorns. What is the meaning of unicorn? Unicorn mean uh, the startup whose valuation is equal to or more than or more than 1 billion dollar. So that startups are known as unicorn and India produced in the last six years 82 unicorn. This is the world third largest number of unicorns. So remember earlier this position was with the United Kingdom but now United Kingdom is on the fourth spot. It is according to global unicorn index. Remember this. And Piyush Goelji also unveiled LEAP program uh, to forward the startups. LEAP stands for leverage, encourage, assess and promote. It means all the things will be provided by ministry and uh, this ministry will encourage the startups because in the last you can say uh, six years, uh, 60,000 60, startups registered under the DPIIT which is uh, the main department of promotion of industry and internal trade under which startups can register and 60,000 startups are registered and more than 6 lakh jobs created by Indian startups from 2018 to 2021. This is a huge thing. That's why this year India's digital summit is focusing on the startups and the theme is also like uh, uh, supercharging startups. So this is Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Union Minister is Piyush Goel. Constituency is Maharashtra because he is currently the member of Rajya Sabha. Moving to next question. India's first mobile honey processing van launched at which place? So very simple question. You have to remember the question as same as in slide. And uh, this is launched in Ghaziabad. So answer of this question is A. So you can see here the mobile honey processing unit can process up to 300 kg of honey in 8 hours. So this is a huge thing. And the mobile van is designed by KVIC. It stands for Khadi, Khadi and Village Industry. Khadi and Village Industry Commission. And uh, it was established at a cost of 15 lakh rupees. And the van is equipped with a testing laboratory. And uh, which would ex uh, in uh, instantly examine the honey's quality. And the van will benefit the beekeepers in uh, rural areas of Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Haryana, Delhi, Punjab and the Rajasthan or you can say adjacent areas of Uttar Pradesh. Very important. But you have to remember this is uh, launched and developed by a very important organization which is known as KVIC, Khadi Village and Industry Commission and who is the chairman? It is Vinay Saxena. Vinay Saxena. Moving to next question. Who has signed a joint development agreement with Africa 50? to develop Africa's first private public or public private partnership more transmission project in the Kenya. So you have to remember the place that this project will be established in Kenya and it is a joint development project of Power Grid and Africa 50. So answer of this question is D. So Power Grid Corporation of India Limited has signed a joint development agreement with Africa 50 which is the Pan-African Infrastructure Investment. Remember Pan-Africa uh, Infrastructure Investment Platform infrastructure investment platform and it is to continue to develop Africa's first public private partnership mode transmission project in Kenya which is known as Kenya transmission project. So remember the name of the project. So this is in between power grid and Africa 50 and the project involves uh, two type of the transmission projects. One is uh, like development financing and construction and operation of 400 kilowatt uh, Lesos and Lusak which is in Kenya. Next is 220 kV. Kisumu Musaga transmission line under the public private framework. But you have to remember what is the role of power grid here. So under this partnership all the technical, all the operational support of this project will be provided by power grid. So this is the role of power grid. And what is the role of Africa 50? 
Africa 50 will act as a bridge between the Kenya government as well as the private investors to develop this project and bring finance expertise. So it means Africa 50 will attach the Kenyan government and the private players and technical and operational guidelines will be provided by power grid. So there are so many benefits like the project will improve both the supply and reliability of the power transmission in the western area of the Kenya and further increase private sector investment into the expansion of Africa power transmission network. So you have to remember this organization Africa 50. It is an infrastructural investment platform that contributes Africa's economy growth and currently it has 31 shareholders. Uh, out of 31, 28 are African countries and 3 are other organizations. So remember about Power Grid. Uh, this organization was established in 1989. It is known as Power Grid Corporation of India. Its name changed in 1992. Uh, and its chairman and managing director is K. Shrikant. K. Shrikant and its headquarters is in Guru Gram, Haryana. Moving to next question. Which company renamed as White Oak Capital Mutual Fund? Just remember the question as same as in slide. And this is Yes Mutual Fund. So answer of this question is C. So Yes Asset Management has renamed as the White Oak Capital Asset Management with effect from 12th of Jan 2022. And you can see here in November 2021, White Oak Capital Group announced the completion of the transaction to acquire the mutual fund business of the Yes Bank. So it means all the asset management business of the Yes Bank will now be renamed as White Oak Capital Asset Management. Even the mutual fund has also been named as the White Oak Capital Mutual Fund. Just remember the question as same as in slide. Moving to next. Issues related to cards, net banking and fair practices top complaint grounds of banking ombudsman RBI report was published. So in simple word you can say that RBI, Reserve Bank of India released the annual report of ombudsman schemes for 2020. 21 and you can see here it has been prepared for only nine month period like from 1st of July uh, to 31st of March. Many students are thinking that why this report is not prepared till the uh, date of 30th of June because RBI recently changed the financial year like from July, June to April to March. That's why this report is prepared till the date of 31st of March. So that's why this report is nine month period report. And according to this report, like three ombudsman schemes, uh, these are known as bank, banking ombudsman scheme or BOS. Second is OSNBFC, which is known as ombudsman scheme for non-banking financial company. And uh, third one is OSDT, which is ombudsman scheme for digital transaction. And all the uh, schemes related to volume of complaints increased by 22.27%. And total, uh, you can say, uh, complaints are 3 lakh, uh, 3,107. But the disposal rate is also increasing uh, of three schemes like 96.59% is the disposal rate if we are comparing this nine months from the past year. But you have to remember in November 2021, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji uh, combined all the three banking ombudsman schemes. One is banking ombudsman scheme, second is uh, you can say ombudsman scheme for the non-banking financial company, next is the ombudsman scheme for the digital transaction and it become now RB. IOS, it stands for Reserve Bank Integrated Ombudsman Scheme. So all the three ombudsman schemes are now combined and total disposal rate is 96.59 and total uh, you can say ombudsman complaints are now increased to 22.27% if we are comparing with the past year. Moving to next question, DBT or you can say Department of Biotechnology BIRAC, BIRAC stands for Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council. The two startups of this organization, one is NSL, second is uh, Niramai, have received the uh, very prestigious award which is known as Global Women Healthcare Award or Health Tech Award. So you can see here the winners were announced at the Consumer Electronics Show 2022 which was held in Las Vegas in United States of America and this is the most influential tech event in the world owned and produced by the Consumer Technology Association. So uh, you have to remember one thing that this award is won by four organizations. One is uh, Antiva Biosciences, next is UE Life Sciences, next is Niramai Health Analytics Private Limited, next is NSL Technologies Private Limited. But these are two startups which are started by one organization which is known as Birak. Birak comes under the Government of India under the Department of Biotechnology and it stands for Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council. But you can also remember about this Global Women Health Tech Awards. This is very important because this is started by World Bank Group in partnership with the Consumer Technology Association and uh, they launched this uh, award in August 2021. 
and the award recognizes the in innovative startup that leverage technology to improve the women health and safety in emerging market so that's why this award is very very important but we are covering from picture because there are so many options like anvita biosciences ue life sciences nirmai health analytics and in excel just read this line moving to next part it is our important question you have to like this video you have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link here is the question which company and south korea's very famous steel company which is known as posco partnered to explore business in steel as well as renewable energy and this company from india is adani group so answer of this question is b so adani group has signed a non binding memorandum of understanding with the posco which is south korean steel making company to explore business cooperation opportunities in the sectors like steel renewable energy and others and the investment under this mou is estimated to about 5 billion dollar 5 billion dollar it is almost 37000 crore rupees and the business cooperation between the posco and the adani is aimed to bring dominant partnership synergy in the indian steel industry by default the technology and the guidelines or the research and development will be provided by this company which is south korea because uh, uh, you can say maximum to maximum technology lies with the south korea so this is adani group who signs uh, south korea steel maker posco to set up an integrated steel mill and this steel mill will be set up in mundra in gujarat and uh, the technology will be provided by posco and posco and adani have signed mou with the government of gujarat for support and cooperation from the government also and uh, the mou also aims to further collaborate at a group business level in various industries like renewable energy hydrogen technology logistic in line with the carbon reduction requirements so very important and remember about this posco it is south korea company and what is the meaning it is pohang iron and steel company pohang iron and steel company limited so moving to our one liner important point here is the first point uh, tasneem meer becomes the world number 1 in the badminton under 19 girls singles this is the junior ranking which is released by badminton world federation already we covered this question next central depository services limited venture limited services received sebi's approval to set up accreditation agency so not so much important because a accredited investor may avail flexibility in the minimum investment amount or you can say concession from the specific regulatory requirement applicable to the investment product with certain condition for specific product or services not important just remember about sebi here sebi was established in 1988 it become statutory body in 1992 its current head is ajay tyagi and its headquarters is in mumbai you can also remember about cdsl which is central depository services limited it is india's only listed depository with an objective of providing depository services to all stock market participants and it was established in 1999 when ceo and md is nehal vora nehal vora next is ubs securities decreases gdp forecast for financial year 22 to 9.1% so this is switzerland based brokerage securities company which is known as ubs they earlier predicted 9.2% growth in financial year 22 but now they predicted 9.1% and also increased projection for financial year 23 to 8.2% earlier they predicted the 7.7% so it is very important so you can read the uh, ubs uh, securities projection but you have to remember nso projection which was recently released 9.2% and uh, world bank projection that is 8.3% in financial year 22 uh, and also reserve bank of india rb projected 9.5% so this is important this can be asked by the examiner next minister of state for education subhash sarkar launched svp 2021-2022. What is the meaning of this SVP? It is Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar for 2021-22, and uh, it is underlying the importance of water sanitation and hygiene. And the schools will be assessed through an online portal, mobile application in six sub categories. One is water, second is sanitation, hand wash and soap, uh, operation and maintenance, operation and maintenance, behavior change, capacity building. so the six sub categories will be awarded with a prize money of 20000 per school so this is huge and uh, this uh, svp or you can say uh, swachh vidyalaya puraskar was first introduced in the year of 2016 17 under the department of school education and literacy next india's retail inflation in the december 2021 climbs to five month high that is 5.59% it is data of ministry of statistics program implementation but uh, don't remember this data it is not important uh, union minister is rao inderjit singh rao inderjit singh constituency is gurugram haryana 
नेक्स्ट इसरो सक्सेसफुली कंडक्टेड क्वालिफिकेशन टेस्ट ऑफ क्रायोजेनिक इंजन फॉर द गगनयान सो दिस इज यू कैन से वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेस्ट एंड इट इज फॉर द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ सेवन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड्स एट इसरो प्रपल्शन कॉम्प्लेक्स विच इज सुटेड इन तमिलनाडु and the qualification test ensure the reliability as well as the robustness of the cryogenic engine for the induction into the human rated launch vehicle for gaganyaan and the engine will undergo four more test uh, for a uh, you can say cumulative duration of 1810 seconds and uh, remember this is very important mission gaganyaan and it is first human space mission which will be launched in the year of 2023 by isro and with this launch india will become the fourth nation in the world to launch a human space flight mission after united states of america russia and china and the main objective is to demonstrate the capability to send humans to send humans to low earth orbit and remember fourth uh, four indian astronauts were trained by russia for the gaganyaan mission very important and even isro is planning to conduct the first unmanned mission under the gaganyaan program by 75th anniversary of india independence that is on 15th of august 2022 so i already covered about isro like uh, recently uh, chairman uh, who was uh, selected as the chairman s somnath rocket scientist s somnath headquarter is in bengaluru karnataka moving to our question of the day what was the question of 13th of jan 2022 cash reserve ratio is maintained in the form of first of all you have to remember cash reserve ratio is a part of uh, monetary policy and it is a money market instrument used to used by the rbi to regulate the flow of money into the market and crr is a certain percentage of the total deposits with the rbi uh, instructs the commercial banks to keep a reserve with the rbi remember it is kept with the rbi so answer of this question is b balance with reserve bank of india so it is the most important tool uh, to control the uh, flow of money in the market so it is cash reserve ratio moving to the question of the day what is the question a check which is payable to any person who present it to for a payment at the bank counter is called so you have to tell me answer only in the comment box i am waiting your answer please like this video please share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group as well press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time it is a fierce cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section and don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy like this smiley thank you guys take care and bye bye